Destiny 2's latest expansion, The Witch Queen, has been out for less than two months at this point. We've finally had some time to sink our teeth into this new expansion, so let's give it a quick overview, starting with the story. The main story of this expansion follows Savathun, as she has been teased ever since the launch of Destiny 2, and even some parts of Destiny 1. Mars has come back in some form or fashion, along with Savathun's throne world, which is where a majority of this campaign will be taking place. We go into the throne world and see that she's come into the possession of the powers of the light. So the main premise of the story is we snoop around Savathun's throne world, gather information, and later take her down as she warns us about the next enemy to come in the next year or two of Destiny. I know I glossed over like 90% of the campaign, but this is what it boils down to. Overall, I was pretty blown away by this campaign and how much it did, not only for the lore, but for the game itself. It really does feel like all of these things that we've done in previous seasons and past expansions are actually changing the world of Destiny, which is great. Each mission has its own unique challenges and cool little bosses that, that you face. The campaign this go-around, I would say, is about double the length, maybe even more uh, compared to Beyond Light's story, so probably close to around six hours. But if you want more of a challenge, Bungie has made a new difficulty for the new story missions. The Legend difficulty is a more challenging run of the story missions that locks you at a certain light level and has some minimal modifiers, similar to the ones you would see on Nightfalls. For doing Legend difficulty, you get double loot drops, so you level up at a faster rate. And at the end, you will get a set of 1520 gear plus a new piece of exotic armor for either your Titan, Hunter, or Warlock, whichever you completed the campaign on. Another challenge that you will face in the story are Hive Guardians. Yes, these Hive can cast supers, throw grenades, put up walls, the same abilities we have. They can all use them now. And when you kill them, they're not really dead. You have to go up and finish their ghosts in order to actually kill them, or they will respawn. I really do like the challenge that these enemies provide in the game, with the knight and the acolyte being the more difficult ones, and the wizards just kind of being pushed off to the side. But they really do kind of provide that mini-boss challenge to the game, which is really, really good for the story. For the post-story quest, it was very interesting, as we see Savathun's worm from the previous season, and Marasov have some verbal sparring, but in the end, we make a grenade launcher that shoots worms. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not making this up. As for the destination of Savathun's Sloan World, it's another big location with amazing art design, with no real complaints in that department. But maybe we could add another fast travel point so it makes it easier to get around. It also does lack a little bit of life, so to speak, so it would be cool if Bungie could add maybe more enemies or have them doing things or make something the world seem more alive in some way. That would be pretty cool. There are some activities to do around the throne world. You have Wellspring, which is your six-person matchmade activity in the expansion. You have Altars of Reflection, which are little lore dumps. And of course, you have the new raid, Vow of the Disciple, which is pretty fun, I would say. It definitely is one of Bungie's best raids that they have put out, although I still love, personally, Last Wish from Forsaken. But as a whole, this is probably Destiny's best story in a long time or at least since Forsaken. Really major props to Bungie and the story writers. Moving on to weapon crafting, it's finally entered Destiny. It's pretty simple with getting weapon patterns from Deep Sight Resonance versions of those weapons, and getting materials from other weapons that drop with Deep Sight Resonance on them. Keep in mind, not every weapon in the game is going to be craftable, only certain ones are. The main thing that I have been hearing from people is how expensive it is to swap between the perks, how much materials that they use. Bungie may change up how they do crafting later, but they did up the amount of materials you can hold to use for crafting. Speaking of crafting, the first weapon you will craft is the new weapon type, the Glaive. They are... Okay, I like using them, and I like the unique way that you can shoot and melee with the weapon as well. But its overall performance is very lackluster in high-level activities, unless they get a really major buff. Finally, one of the more major things that Bungie added was Void 3.0, 
This was the first of the light subclasses that has gotten the stasis treatment with aspects and fragments, letting you make your own builds, which is great. So now you can make a more tankier build if you want, or you can make a build that just explodes everything. Overall, Bungie did a very good job with this rework, and I can't wait to see the next subclasses done. This expansion is very good for Destiny. This is Bungie's best story for an expansion yet, with a great raid and new things added into the game and more things coming. This is going to be a great year for Destiny. And that's all from me. See you guys later.